I'm talking about Haley D on this channel for the first time since early 2020. And a lot has happened since then with Haley. Some things that I won't even bring up, but what I will be bringing up is Haley Deegan's performance and how she's progressed in NASCAR so far. Now, I remember the last time I talked about Haley Deegan, I said that she was wasting her time in the ARCA series, and my opinion hasn't changed on that. I'm actually glad she did one year in ARCA because she wasn't really learning anything. Going up against a super weak field most weeks, and racing at a good amount of tracks that she most likely won't be racing in the top three series. So yeah, she was wasting her time. Some people in the comment section of that Deegan video made the argument that a lot of the greats came through the ARCA series, which yeah, that's true. But those great drivers competed in ARCA when it was actually competitive. Now you'll be lucky to see at least 10 competitive ARCA cars show up to the track nowadays. Now some people will point to drivers like Ty Gibbs, Chandler Smith, Corey Himes, Sam Mayer, and may say, well, those guys are wasting their time too. And yep, I will agree with you on that. The ARCA series is a dying series and it's really difficult to gauge talent. I mean, some drivers you can tell got it, but for the most part, you don't know how truly good someone is. Speaking of judging talent, Haley Deegan's performance in the ARCA series was not that great. She ran a full season in ARCA in 2020 and scored no wins, four top fives, and 17 top tens and finished third in points. Third in points? What the hell are you talking about, Elite? That sounds like a pretty good season to me. Now nah, hold up for a sec though. Yeah, third in points doesn't sound that bad, but there was only four drivers that competed full time in ARCA in 2020, so yeah. But what about those 17 top 10s she scored in a 20 race season? Well, like I said, ARCA is not really competitive. And when you get a top 10 in that series, it ain't nothing to really brag about. Nowadays, it's about 15 to 18 cars that be in an ARCA race, and a good portion of the field is way off pace. I think if you race ARCA with how the way it is now, then you should be disappointed if you don't finish fifth or higher. Deegan finished in the top five four times out of the 20 races. Did she spend any time up front? Not really leading only 86 laps total throughout the season. She spent most of the season running between 5th to 9th, and in my opinion, the best race she ran was the race where she led 85 laps, which was at I-44 Speedway. It was the only race throughout the year where she actually competed for the win, besides at Daytona, which, by the way, she ran a good race at Daytona. She was pretty much a sitting duck because she was sandwiched between two Toyotas, and if she would have attempted to make a move, she most likely would have fell out of the top five and not have had that second place finish on her resume. I wanted Deegan to be in the truck series ASAP because it's a way more competitive series. Competition makes you better and I feel like she could progress faster by being in a competitive series like the truck series. Spend multiple seasons there and learn to actually perfect their race craft. By the end of 2020, it was confirmed that Deegan would be running full time in the truck series in 2021. As a matter of fact, she made her debut with DGR at Kansas and actually ran pretty well for being her first race in that series, finishing 16th and staying on lead lap. My expectations for her going into 2021 was mostly top 15s with occasions of finishing top 10 or even top 5. I didn't see her getting any wins. When it comes to wins, I was right, but running position, she didn't meet those expectations. It was quite a few races in 2021 where Deegan ran in the 20s for the majority of the race and then found herself sniffing a top 15 or even in the top 15 by the end of the race. Now to Deegan's defense, she's a rookie, but also there was barely any practice and qualifying for NASCAR throughout 2021. Most races, they'll just line up and go. A lot of races, Deegan would start in the back. During the first two stages, she's just learning the track and trying to figure things out in general, but Everyone else is dealing with the same thing. There's other rookies alongside with Deegan that has shown way more pace than she has. I look at Derek Krause last year who impressed with no practice. Carson Hosevar and Chandler Smith is two other rookies that have shown a lot of pace as well even with no practice. Haley just needs to find more pace. She's had a few good runs this year. Her best three races in my opinion were Kansas, the second Texas race where she was running top 10 to a pit road issue, and Charlotte all races where she ran in the top 10. Not looking into the top 10, but actually driving into the top 10 and running there for most of the race. Unfortunately, she didn't finish in the top 10 in any of these races because of circumstances, but it's great that she at least showed some promise this year. 
that she can run in the top 10. She's only going to get better. Now, a theme of Haley Deegan's rookie year in the truck series is that she's been involved in a lot of shit. Just things that's happening out of her control. This happened to her so much in 2021 that she was on the verge of tears after one of the races where she got involved in a wreck. It's like I'm trying so hard. Like, I put so many hours in the sim, so many hours into watching footage, into data, into meetings, and going over everything. It's like I do my job, and it's just... It sucks. You got guys out there, and it's just like I just got hit. One of the guys wrecked in front of me. Someone else hit me from behind, and and it hurts. Just like it just sucks. It wears on me so bad. Cause it's like so much work that goes into this, just for like that to happen. Like I drove through the field twice. It's just like trucks are a mess. You know, everyone's just like over their head driving, stupid aggressive, and just wrecks everything. And I just I don't get it. Like. First restart, we just get absolutely nailed from behind. Literally coming to the green on the first restart. Like, really, dude? 170 laps to go. Really gonna hit me right now? Where are you gonna go? And I really do feel bad for her. You can tell Haley Deegan is serious about this and that she wants to be successful. And that's great. But you can also say that Haley has found herself involved in a lot of crap this year because of running mid pack most of the time. When you're constantly running back there, you're bound to get caught up in something. Those drivers mid-pack all the way to last are racing just as hard as the leaders. Not to mention, it's a lot of inexperienced drivers in the back of the field. This is why it's important for her to find more pace. Practice and qualifying will be returning in NASCAR in 2022, so she got a chance to work on some things in practice and actually qualify. She's got a whole season under her belt, and when she visits these tracks next year, she'll kind of know what to expect. Not only does Haley needs to find more pace, but also she really needs to work on her restarts, which is one of her biggest weaknesses. One race that it was very noticeable and cost her a good finish was at Kansas where she was running well inside the top 10 all day and was on her way to a top 10 finish until a late race caution happened. The restart happens, she doesn't get going, finishes outside the top 10, and just like that her top 10 finish was gone. And that was very frustrating to watch when it happened. Being a good restart is so important nowadays because it's hard to get track position. Plus, you got two guaranteed stage cautions that's going to come out in the race. Those are very great opportunities to grab positions and then hope that you can maintain that track position. An improvement for Deegan is at least not losing spots on restarts. Something that could also help Deegan out is having a veteran teammate. Her current teammate is Tanner Gray and he's an upcoming driver just like Deegan. He's only got one more year of experience than her. If I was DGR, I would expand to a three truck team and bring in a veteran like, hmm, I don't know, Ryan Priest, someone who won for them at Nashville in 2021. Ryan Priest doesn't have anything lined up for Cup and this is a great opportunity to bring him in and mentor both Haley Deegan and Tanner Gray. They both need an experienced driver to lean on. We know DGR has fast trucks. Ryan Priest proved that at Nashville. It would be huge to have him along because it would drastically help out DGR. If I was Haley, I would also be talking to as many Cup drivers as possible whenever they race at the same track as Cup. She's a four driver, so she got drivers like Kevin Harvick, who's a huge supporter of hers, Brad Keselowski, and Joey Logano. All drivers who have a Cup championship and plenty of victories. Try to learn as much as you can from those drivers and ask a ton of questions. I don't know if she does this now, but if she isn't, she needs to start doing it if she wants to get much better as a race car driver. She got to drive a coach who is David Reagan, which, yeah, he won twice in the Cup Series at Super Speedways, but David Reagan? Not trying to crap on him. David Reagan seems like a nice guy, and to his credit, he was a good Super Speedway racer, but the dude was not that successful overall. This is why I would have Kevin Harvick's number to pick his brain and learn as much as I can going into a race. So improving her restarts, finding more pace, having an experienced teammate on her team and just talking to more veteran cut drivers is what Deegan needs to start doing next year. What do I expect from Haley Deegan in 2022? Well, hopefully a major improvement. She needs to find herself in the top 10 much more and actually finish the Making the playoffs would be huge. Now we know a win puts you into the playoffs and that begs the question. 
with Haley DUN in 2022. Obviously, Daytona and Talladega are her biggest opportunities, but to be honest, I want her to win at a non-play track. Her best track seems to be Kansas. She finished 16th on her debut and ran well inside the top 10 in 2021. I think she can possibly be challenged for the win if she continues to improve as a driver, which I'm sure she will. Winning a race, even if it's at a super speed, would be huge for her, but I think I would be more impressed if she won at a track like Kansas. Out driving everyone, pulling her away, and getting the win will make you seem more legit as a driver. In general, I think she needs to win a race next year. If she can be consistent next year, but don't win before the playoffs, I think it's a possibility of her making the playoffs on points, and that alone will be a huge deal. Now, I don't think D is going to win multiple races to contend for a championship, but if she could just be a top 10 driver next year, that would be a drastic improvement. Now, Haley has said she would like to run a few Xfinity races in 2022, but to be honest, I don't know how I feel about that. But who knows? She'll probably be better in the Xfinity car than a truck. That's how Harrison Burton was. Not that great in trucks, but when he got into an Xfinity car, he was really good and proceeded to win four races in his rookie year. But we'll see what happens with Haley. Haley Deegan is one of the more promising female drivers in NASCAR right now, and it's a big deal if she succeeds because it will be huge for NASCAR. We haven't seen a successful female driver in NASCAR, and that's just the truth. Plenty of previous women drivers have broken barriers, which is great, but I think that most of us would like to see a truly competitive female driver out there on the track in NASCAR. Unlike previous women drivers, Deegan is starting out doing this at a very young age, so it gives her a ton of potential. As long as she doesn't get rushed to cup, I think the potential for Haley Deegan is very high. So what are your thoughts on Haley Deegan as a NASCAR driver so far? How many years do you think she needs in the lower series? Do you see her making drastic improvements to her racecraft year by year? Do you think she gets rushed to cup? Leave a comment because I'm very curious to know your thoughts. I'm going to go ahead and roll up out of here. Y'all have a good one. Peace.